The key to a solid dado joint in plywood is getting the dado width exactly right. Now you can do that through a process in trial and error, but that's going to take a lot of time and waste a lot of scrap material. The method that I'm going to show you here uses only two test cuts and guarantees you a snug fitting dado on the second one. Your dado setup involves three parts. There are the outside blades, the chippers, and the shims of various thicknesses. I've created a small scrap wood jig using just a block of MDF with a hole drilled in the center and a dowel that's the same thickness as my saw arbor. Then I took a cutoff piece from that and put that on this side so that I have something to rest my actual project piece on. I've stacked a handful of chippers on top of one of the outside blades here to about what I think is going to be the thickness of my workpiece. When I put this on, I see it's still a good bit undersized by at least one chipper. So I'm going to add that and a short stack of these shims before I replace the outside blade. Now I've got a set that will cut just a hair over the thickness of the plywood. I've reinstalled the dado set, plugged my saw in, and now I'm ready to make my first test cut. Now I'm going to test the dado width using an actual piece from the project. This has been finished sanded, and that's important. If you don't finish sand before you test the fit, then you go back later and sand it off, it's going to come up short and your workpiece will be too thin for your dado. As you can see, I've got plenty of wiggle room in this joint. Now, I'm going to unplug the saw again and remove the dado set. Now that I've removed one of the chippers and all of the shims, I'm going to start determining how many shims I have to remove to tighten up this dado. The way to do that is to take each shim individually and slip it into this space between the actual workpiece and the edge of this dado we cut in our test, uh, test scrapper. You can see I'm getting close. This is a particularly thick one here, and it didn't quite go in. With this one, I believe I've gotten as many shims in here as I'm going to fit. So these are the ones I'm going to leave out of my next test cut. Now at this point, the dado height is going to be more critical. So I'm going to use my combination square set for a 3 8 inch deep cut and crank it up until it just barely touches the square. Then lock in the dado height using the locking wheel on the height adjustment. Our saw is plugged back in and we're ready to make test cut number two. As you can see, there's no wiggle room here. 